Hello there, welcome back to the new video. Today we'll be going through this paper which is titled as Enabling Language Models to Fill in the Blanks. This is from researchers from Stanford University. But before that, if you're new to this channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button and like this video. Also make sure to share it with your friends to whosoever might be interested in such content. Cool, so with that said, let's start with the abstract. So the paper proposes a simple approach for the task of text infilling. So the task of text infilling is about like, let's say if I give you this sentence and this word wasn't there. So that idea is to kind of fill in the text between the existing text. That's, you can think of this as like fill in the blanks kind of a thing. But again, depending on the span that you're trying to fill, whether it's one word or a sentence or a paragraph, you can generalize and term this problem as text infilling. So the idea is to crack this task with the use of language models. Now, or typically when you see a language model, you must have read about a couple of them starting from GPT-2 and its variations to BERT, SpanBERT, so on and so forth, where some of them being bi-directional in nature, such as BERT, SpanBERT, Roberta, all of that, whereas some of them are autoregressive. So the major difference between autoregressive and bi-directional language models is that in autoregressive, at any instance of time, if your model is trying to predict a certain word, it's only allowed to see all the words that it has produced in the past. There's no scope for him to peak in future and make a prediction at some earlier point. Whereas in bidirectional, as the name suggests, at any given instance, if you're trying to predict a word, you can even look at its past, look at its future, and then thoughtfully make a prediction at that intersection point. So in this paper, they typically focus on if we can use autoregressive kind of language models to do this infilling task. And one of the major reasons for that being existing systems such as BERT, Roberta, SpanBERT, all of that are mastered to predict a certain span of certain max length L given by directional context. But here, let's say if you're talking about story generation, if you're talking about auto-completing lyrics or maybe writing certain long text, then the infilling could be like really going up to a couple of sentences to a paragraph and so on. So since the upper cap of the generation is a little loosely defined, so that makes it a little obvious to choose AI models. Okay. So again, for this task, so they tested their model on infilling sentences or short snippets of text for short stories, scientific abstracts and lyrics. And while doing human evaluation, they found for at least short stories, the sentences that their system have produced, it was even difficult for humans to identify whether this was machine generated or not. Cool, so that's the major idea to what we are going to learn in this paper. So let's see how do they go about doing this. So let's see about input and output of the infilling task. If the input goes as she ate blank for blank. So now here blank token is acting as something that the model has to fill. And the output for this should be that the model should give out is she ate leftover pasta. This is the first blank for lunch. Now lunch is the second blank. So this is what we are expecting out of the model. Now talking about the infilling framework, if this was the actual data, in a stochastic fashion, they create this input where they randomly mask out certain words or sentences depending on what the downstream task is where you are trying to apply the infilling task. In this illustration, it looks like a phrase. So leftover pasta was churned out. The word lunch was churned out and both of them were placed as the blank token in the input. And the target for that is you put in the churn phrase for that blank followed by a dummy token answer followed by text for the second blank and then again the dummy token answer. And eventually you concatenate your input and target. So this will become she ate blank for blank separation which kind of hints the model like we are going towards the second aspect of the sentence. Then you put in the second sentence, which is target, which is nothing but the filled version of what has to be put in the blank followed by the answer token. Then you train a typical language model in autoregressive fashion, where the task is at any point, you want to predict what the correct word has to be. And depending on what it predicts and what it had to, you calculate the cross entropy loss, back propagate, and train the parameters of your model. Once that training is done and your model is good enough in terms of perplexity, then for any test sentence, you're given the input and as soon as you're given the separator token as the end token for that sequence, the model should start outputting something that looks like this, which you can later post process and chunk out the first segment that has to be filled, which is leftover pasta, for example, and then the lunch by splitting on this target sequence on the answer token. So yeah, that's the entire paper. So it's just one figure that explains how this entire paper works. Just to give you one concrete example again, 
in case you want to fill in a sentence in a paragraph. So let's say if I chunk out this, this is something that I've pulled out from this entire paragraph and I put a blank over here. Now my input to the model while training would be I given everything, all the text followed by blank, then all the text still here. Then I give it a separator token. And then I give in efficient ad generating text and then the answer token. So this is my one sequence on which I try to maximize the likelihood. And once everything is done, now let's say if I'm writing a research paper, I have written these three lines and the ending part of it, I want my model to predict this segment, what I've highlighted in red. Then simply what I would do is I will give in the first part blank, second part, and then I'll just give in a trigger token, which is separator. And after that, the things that it should produce should ideally align to what's written over here. And finally, it would add it with answer token. Cool. So I think now it would have been pretty clear. And there's nothing else in the paper. It's just about then evaluating on evaluating against existing language models. I'm not sure what LMREV is. It should be reversed language model or something. Then LM all, which considers both prefix and suffix and then concatenates and kind of reproduces everything out of the box, not just the things that have to be filled. And then we have ILM, which is infilling language model, which we just saw. And we can see the perplexity numbers. Clearly we are far better than just using language model or the reverse version of it. So in this case, the lower the number, the better the model is supposed to be. And then we are almost equivalent to how LM all performs. Although the ILM achieves similar kind of PPL compared to LM all with shorter sequence lengths. Okay, cool. Let's see and find an example. So this is an example from a story snippet where let's say Patty was excited about her friends or she had been working hard preparing the food. Then there's a blank which the model has to fill. And then you have following three sentences. So the bird says something like this, which is totally out of the context. SA, I'm not sure what it is, but still it looks like out of the context. Then LM is the language model that would have just seen the prefix and then produced it. So it says she went to check the TV. So this looks like we are talking about in context where the model is able to use correct pronoun and talking about some activity that she's doing because the past two sentences hint towards she doing some work. And then you have ILM, which is the infilling language model where it says Patty knew her friends wanted pizza. So in this, if you see, right, with first two sentences, you get her friends are coming over. From the last three sentences, you get an idea like they're sitting on the table. So the model inferred the name correctly and the context where her friends are coming over and also added a food item, which is pizza, because, because in the first two sentences, we knew like her friends are coming. There's some context around food. And in the last three, we knew they are sitting on the table. So probably we are talking about pizza over here. So that's how the model must have inferred it. Cool. I think now we're done with the paper. Thank you so much for listening to this point. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and spread the word. Bye-bye and take care.